வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் வீடியோ ஆன் கிளாசிக்ஸ் அண்ட் நியூரோ சயின்ஸ் இன் திஸ் செட் ஆஃப் வீடியோஸ் வி ஆர் லுக்கிங் அட் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் க்ரோத் ஃபேக்டர் இட்ஸ் அ சிக்னலிங் மாலிகூல் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி வில் பி லுக்கிங் அட் தி நர்வ் க்ரோத் ஃபேக்டர் ஆர் தி என்ஜிஎஃப் அ பிக் கொஸ்டின் தட் ரிசர்ச்சர்ஸ் in the late 1800s and the early 1900s grappled with or struggled with was how neurons developed and identified their targets because neurons communicate with each other how does a developing neuron know to which neuron it should communicate with because there are millions of these or at least in the adult tissue there are going to be millions of these but as they are developing there are going to be many of these how is this communication channel established how does a, a developing neuron know where exactly to go for example or what is the target neuron or what is the target cell kahal believed that a large proportion of the developing neurons went on to become adult neurons that is uh, they survived to term and uh, they successfully communicated or or established a communication channel or succeeded in collaborating with other neurons other structures of the adult nervous system however is that all there is to this that is the question that was being studied so this story begins with uh, frank lilly who was an early pioneer in embryology margaret shorey was a student and she performed some experiments where she found that removal of a limb bud led that is removal of the limb bud in early developing embryos okay in chick and in salamander she found that such removal led to serious compromise in the development of sensory neurons severe losses in both sensory and motor neurons this is what margaret shorey found this was in 1909 later in 1920 sam datweiler who was harrison's student remember harrison from the previous video who showed that neuronal cell growth is possible in lymph in, in vitro study his that harrison's student is sam dotweiler who performed this experiment in which he transplanted tissue from one embryo to another embryo or he grafted tissue margaret shorey showed that removing tissue caused serious death of sensory and motor neurons but if you graft new cells would it lead to an improvement or an increase in the number of uh, motor neurons and uh, the sensory neurons that is the question to that end sam datweiler actually grafted tissues and he found that if you graft a new bud into existing tissue it actually produced more sensory and motor neurons so essentially this is a dynamic process it is not simple it is not that this neuron goes to that tissue it's not that simple as development is happening there is more dynamics that is involved around this time 
Victor Hamburger, remember Victor Hamburger from the previous video, Victor Hamburger first studied with Spemann and he came to the United States to study with Frank Lilly and he wanted to ask the question, is there a quantitative relationship between the amount of tissue that is removed or grafted and the amount or the number of neurons that either die or develop. So, is there a quantitative relationship or is it just arbitrary? And Hamburger found that, that there is actually a quantitative relationship between the amount of tissue that is removed or grafted and the amount of uh, neuronal development that is either halted or increased. So, there is the depending on the volume or the amount of uh, tissue that is grafted there is going to be an increase a corresponding increase in the nerve tissue development. And so, based on these studies Hamburger formulated some hypotheses regarding the role of target tissues in the development of neural cells or nerve cells. These hypotheses or this hypothesis that there are two specific agents, one for sensory or spinal ganglia, one for spinal ganglia and the other for lateral motor columns. And these agents travel retrogradely along the neurons, along the nerves to their nerve centers which is the these two, the lateral uh, motor columns and the spinal ganglia, these agents. And these agents regulate the amount uh, or the amount of development or the development that happens in these nerve centers in a quantitative manner, quantitative manner that is important. Later this idea uh, where uh, Hamburger later mentioned that you know two decades later uh, the discovery of the nerve growth factor NGF identified one of these two agents that he postulated in the 1930s. He sent to a friend in Italy, his friend is Giuseppe Levy and this Giuseppe Levy sent or shared it with another colleague called Rita Levy Mantalcini. Their collaboration led to some interesting insights where they found that there was both central cell death near extirpated limb sites that is expected, but there was also natural cell death that happened as development was happening. So, this idea that as development is happening, remember this is a developing tissue, these are developing embryo, as development is happening you will expect more and more cells to be produced, not death of cells. So, this idea that some of these cells die as the development progresses was new or revolutionary at that time. That is development happens not only by generation of new neurons, but also by pruning of the unwanted neurons or selective cell death or pruning of unwanted neurons. It is a two step process, it is a two dimensional, two directional process. So, this observation of a natural cell death happening during embryonic development was the first in recorded history. A question is uh, what leads to maintenance or growth of uh, certain neurons while other neurons are dying off? You see uh, there are a set of neurons, some of these neurons are continuing to develop and branch out into more neurons are developing otherwise, some of these neurons are dying off. What is the specific 
reason why some of these neurons continue to develop and mature into adulthood and some of these neurons do not mature and die off in the process. There must be some reason why this happens. The answer came from an unexpected quarter. One of Hamburger's student was Elmer Bucher. So, Elmer Bucher transplanted a tumor into growing tissue instead of a limb and he asked the question would that stimulate or not stimulate development. That. Surprisingly, a growing tumor strongly simu stimulated the growth of sensory nerves in the spinal cord. In, uh, so, what he did was uh, he took mouse sarcoma and he implanted this in a embryo of a developing chick and he found that there was a development of uh, the sensory uh, neurons in the spinal cord towards this uh, tumor, towards this tumor. So, Hamburger consulted Bucher and asked him can I pursue this line of study and uh, Bucher uh, suggested yes, but he later regretted perhaps he could have continued this line of study himself, but anyhow Hamburger continued this line of study with uh, in collaboration with Rita Levi Montalcini where he asked the question would this tumor based method lead to finding this particular growth factor or this agent, this chemical agent that is perhaps responsible for this sort of growth. So, they found that uh, there was this great stimulation or stimulating effect of uh, the dorsal root uh, by using a tumor, by transplantation of a tumor and uh, they concluded that they hypothesized that this must be due to some substance, some agent that is secreted by the tumor and they hypothetically called this agent as the nerve growth stimulating factor. So, Levi Montalcini was very keen, she was determined to further study this nature of this uh, nerve growth stimulating factor. So, she went to Brazil, she went to Rio de Janeiro where she developed tissue culture assays for assessing the amount or levels of this nerve growth stimulating factor in a, in a quantitative, in a semi quantitative manner, in somewhat quantitative manner. Okay. So, at around the same time Stanley Cohen joined Hamburger's laboratory. Stanley Cohen was a biochemist and he wanted to understand the nature, the chemical nature, the biochemical nature of this nerve growth stimulating factor. So, what he did was uh, he tried to identify the chemical composition of this nerve growth stimulating factor and uh, he found that this tumor extract contained both nucleic acids and proteins. So, to remove the nucleic acids and to purify the proteins, he decided to use snake venom. So, because nucleic acids would be cleaved by this uh, snake venom because snake venom contained phosphoesterase which will cleave the, the nucleic acid. So, that way you will have a greater quantity or uh, purified uh, proteins, but what happened was surprisingly that snake venom itself stimulated further growth of the nerve growth stimulating factor. Later, it was understood that the snake venom itself contained a large amount of these growth factors. Snake venom is produced in the salivary glands of uh, the snake. So, somehow 
it was thought that perhaps the salivary glands could have a large amount of these uh, nerve growth stimulating factors. And Stanley Cohen studied the salivary glands or the sub maximilary glands of mice and he found that these contained a large amount of this nerve growth stimulating factor which later led to the purification of this nerve growth stimulating factor. So, how we came from using a tumor to study development which is what was proposed by Bucher to snake venom which stimulated the growth of tissues to the submaximillary glands of uh, mice essentially shows that chance favored the prepared mind. We saw that in the last week that chance favors the prepared mind. So, you learn from each other, you build on other people's work, but you always be prepared for surprises because uh, what they used the snake venom was to clean the nucleic acids because the expectation was that the phosphoesterase in the snake venom would cleave the nucleic acids and uh, purify the protein, but what happened was that it de developed or it stimulated development against expectation. So, you need to be prepared for surprises and you need to address, you need to account for that and you need to build on that. This is what happened in that case. The nerve growth factor was isolated finally in the 1970s from the submaxillary gland of the mouse much later in the 1970s. So, this nerve growth factor marked the advent of trophic, trophic means the factors that lead to survival that help with survival factors that help in uh, development or survival targeting and uh, development of uh, neurons. Also neurotropic, what is tropic? Direction of development affects the direction of the growth of uh, neurons. Neurotrophic is which of the neurons survive. With this, uh, we come to the end of this video. In this video, we saw how the nerve growth factor was identified through various experiments in development bio biology and how it is important to have a prepared mind because the chance favors the prepared mind. Thank you very much for your attention.